Hey YouTubers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. We're in the bathroom now and we have a leak from our faucet in our tub. In this video, we are going to show you how to fix it. Let's take a look. And the very first step is one of the most important steps. We need to figure out which actual handle or pipe the water is leaking from. So come down here and as you can see here, it is leaking pretty good even with both handles in the full off position. And that is warm water, not cold. So that tells us that the warm water line is the one leaking. So with that said, we need to turn off the entire water system and cut all water coming into the actual house. And we will turn it clockwise and make sure it's tight and that will turn off all the water. Back inside and the water is still coming out. We are going to turn on the cold and hot water Open it up completely and allow all that water to drain out. We'll even pull the diverter. And just be patient, it might take a few minutes. However, let all that water exit the plumbing. And while the tub is draining, come up to the sink faucet in the bathroom. Go to the kitchen, turn on the faucet handles and drain all water. And after the actual water is completely stopped, we are going to grab a Phillips screwdriver, carefully remove this screw, and make sure that this handle is in the full open position when you remove this screw. And be very careful, you do not want to drop that screw down the drain. After removing that Phillips screw and setting it in a safe location, chances are it's been a long time since this handle has been removed, so it's probably very oxidized and very corroded on the back side. You just need to wiggle it back and forth, keeping it still in the open configuration. And that's pretty dirty. From here, we are going to remove this. Down at the very bottom, you will see a hole. And chances are it's a flathead screw or a Phillips screw or a hex screw. Go ahead and remove that and we can pull this plate off. And you do not need to remove this entire screw. Just loosen it up. After that, chances are there is some caulk. You are going to break that loose and carefully pull the plate off. There is our entire cartridge and next is this actual cover. Grab a wrench and I went ahead and grabbed a flashlight. I've tried the wrench. It's not going to come off. Your valve is inside. The valve is what runs water to the hot water, the diverter, and the cold water as well as up top to the actual shower head. All right, YouTubers, real quick, visiting the Harbor Freight website and check this image out. This is a shower valve socket wrench set, and I'll enlarge the photo. And these are specifically designed to remove your stems from your internal valve. And trust me, these are very beneficial. However, we do not have our kit handy at the moment. However, if you have the time to go pick this up from your local Harbor Freight or Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace Hardware, we definitely recommend it. I've got a paper towel because I don't want to scratch up the actual chrome portion of the cartridge any more than it already is. From here, we are going to carefully loosen it up. And once I loosen this up, the cartridge is going to come out. And on the very bottom of the cartridge is a Phillips screw. We are going to remove that Phillips screw, take the old rubber gasket out, match it to the new one, put the new one in, secure that Phillips screw, and put the cartridge back into the actual valve. Good news, I was able to break it out. It is a very important thing that your tile is open enough where your cartridge can come out. If it's not, you actually have to chisel or cut a good enough hole to remove the valve. Let's go ahead and remove that Phillips screw and put in a new gasket. It is not a Phillips screw, it's a flat head screw. After removing that flat head screw, just carefully remove that gasket. All right, YouTubers, real quick, this is very important. This is the actual hole in the tile that the hot water stem or cartridge came out of the actual internal valve inside the wall. And look at that circular portion here. This is what is called your seat. And in the event that your seat is badly damaged or corroded, or it has sharp edges right along the actual face of the seat, it is no longer going to create that water 
water tight seal that is required. So with that said, in the event that you have a very damaged or corroded seat, you have to replace the internal seat. It is a very simple process and we can definitely walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how to do it. Below in the actual comments is a link to the step-by-step -step video on how to remove this seat and what tool you will actually need to purchase. And that tool only costs about seven to eight dollars so that's cool. And again, it's very important to inspect that because in the event that you replace the actual rubber gasket on your cartridge or stem and you insert it back, secure it, turn the water back on, and it is still leaking, it's probably because of this seat. So if you experience that, let's replace this. The next thing I did was visited my local Lowe's. You can go to Home Depot or Menards, and this is a pro value pack. These are the rubber gaskets that are inside the actual cartridge and rest up against the internal seat to create that watertight seal. Over time, these gaskets rub away and warp and crack and dry rot. So I don't know the exact size of my washer, so I went to the store and picked up the value pack of 100, and there's a whole bunch of different sizes in here, so I know for a fact mine's in there. I just have to sort through it. Also, I grabbed a assortment of O-rings for the cartridge. And I poured out all of the washers and I've got all 10 sizes and you need to really focus on yours. This is a double zero, zero. You've got a quarter, quarter L. You've got three eighths, three eighths M, three eighths L. You've got half, half inch L, and then a regular five eighths. So again, be very careful that you put on the correct washer. Next thing I did, took the old washer, rested it next to all the new ones and matched it up. Matched the radius as well as the thickness of it. And ours comes out to zero, zero. And the new gasket is inserted, secured with the flathead screw. I went ahead and matched the old washer. The old one was pretty beat up. Put on the new one, in our case, it was a size 12, right there. And we are going to carefully insert this back into the valve and tighten it up. And as you screw this back into the valve, make sure you do not cross thread it. Hand tighten it first. At this point, the entire cartridge is properly secured. And in the event that your external pipe here was loose, you can pull that off earlier in the project. Go ahead and realign that, properly secure this. And that's what the inside looks like. It's very important not to over tighten this cartridge to the actual internal valve. You do not want to cause harm to the valve itself. However, you don't want it loose. You want it pretty snug. From here, grab the cover plate and there's the lower screw here that we loosened up. Don't need to take it out all the way. We'll go ahead and reinsert this and tighten that screw. After that, one of the important things, we will recaulk this seam so no water over time gets in between the actual cover plate and the tile and ends up behind the wall causing mold or wet drywall. That would not be good. From here, let's go ahead and grab the handle and re-secure it. And when putting the handle on, just make sure you align it properly with the grooves. Doesn't matter where it's positioned. Go ahead and close it. Notice how it's offset now. I'll go ahead and carefully pull it off. And now I will align it properly where I want it. So that is in the off position. Let's go ahead and grab the Phillips screw and secure it. After you secure that Phillips screw and everything is aligned properly, looks good. Let's head back outside and turn the water on. Back outside and to open it up, you will turn it counterclockwise. And you will hear the water flow in. Back inside and at the tub. And I've got great news. No drips. That is awesome. And everything is looking good. Let's turn on the hot water. And verify that the water comes out. Cold water. And close that. And close that. And let all the water drain out. And then from there, verify no leaks or no drips. All right, YouTubers, it is now the next morning and I let it sit overnight and the entire inner portion is completely dry and down here is completely dry as well. So that is good. 
In our next video, we are going to replace the entire diverter. So definitely check that out. There's a link down below. That's it, YouTubers. As you can see, a pretty friendly DIY project. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notification bell. Once you do that, every video that we upload, you will be notified. You will be able to stay up to date with us, and that will be awesome. And one more thing, in the event that your diverter is actually leaking, when you turn on the water, you're not actually sending water up to the shower head, but water is somehow making it up to the shower head, that diverter needs to be replaced. Scrolling above is a step-by-step -step video on how to replace that actual diverter. Definitely check that out.